Hey, I'm starting a little course on GLSL basics in Touch Designer. From the ground up, we are going to slowly grow to something much more complex like particle systems, cellular automata, ray marching and whatnot. But first, I want to make a couple of disclaimers. This course is not about becoming a professional GLSL developer. The only reason why I'm making it is because I see a lot of people struggling to get into GLSL and I hope I can show that there is not that much to be afraid of. And it's actually not that difficult and really useful, even if you just learn the basics. Also, I'm gonna be focusing on the GLSL top, at least for now, not the GLSL mat, because it's easier to get into. So let's roll! A GLSL top comes with three dots attached. The first one is a pixel shader, uh, the second one is a console, really useful because it's going to show all your errors and you're gonna get a lot of those. The third that, which is hidden by default, it's a compute shader and we are not going to use it right away, so let's just hide it back. You can also see that a GLSL top comes with a bunch of parameters and instead of meticulously going through each parameter and what it does, I'm just going to skip it until we need them in practice. Let's focus on these that first. So what's a pixel shader? Well, a pixel shader is a small program that's gonna be called for each pixel in your buffer, your image. And it's going to compute and output values for every single pixel in your buffer. Those values can represent an image, point position in space, or any other data, because in Touch Designer pretty much everything is just data. The beauty of GLSL is that it uses GPU for making those computations, and because of that you can easily calculate these 65,536 pixels all in one go, instead of iterating over the whole buffer of pixels and computing them one by one. You can write GLSL code right here in the pixel shader that, but I really recommend you using some external text editor that has at least syntax highlighting. I'm using VS Code, you can use something else, just open preferences, the dat tab and provide a path to the text editor right here. Once you've done with that, you can click the edit button and it's going to open the file in your text editor. Here we really have two blocks of code, a frag color variable and the main function. The only thing you need to know right now is that the main function is what's being called for every pixel and in the end it has to assign some values to the frag color variable. And those values are gonna be the output of your GLSL top. And that's indicated by the out keyword. All this shader does right now is making a vec4 variable called color and assigning that to the frag color, which is the output. In order to understand what a VAC4 is, we need to talk about data types. GLSL has a bunch of different data types, but most of the time you're really gonna be using a few of those, like an integer, which is specified with the keyword int. Let's make an integer variable called x, and it can be equal to any positive or negative integer value, like 1 or 10 or minus 5. Also in GLSL, a usual line of code ends with a semicolon. If instead of an integer, you want to store a value with a floating point like 1.5, there is another data type for you, and it's called float. Let's make a float f, and it's gonna be equal 1.5. Another thing you need to know is that you can easily go from integers to floats, like let's define another float variable, and let's say it equals x, which is minus 5 everything compiles successfully. But if you want to go the other way around and assign a floating point value to an integer variable, it's not going to work. That's because the compiler can't train your mind or decide for you what you want to do with that fractional part of the value. Let's get rid of it for now and focus on another data type, or actually several data types that are vectors. A vector is a data type that holds several values in one place. It's really useful for describing pixel values as RGBA, or positions as X, Y and Z coordinates, 
or actual mathematical vectors and performing all sorts of linear algebra and whatnot. In GLSL, a vector can hold two, three or four values. And so you get a VEC2, VEC3 or VEC4. Let's look at our VEC4 variable color. When you assign values to a vector, you need to use this VEC statement. In this case, it's a VEC4, because this is also a VEC4. So you can specify each of four values individually or assign them all at once. And once you have a vector, you can access all the individual values using letters. The, the, there are some options, like here, if you want to subtract a 0.5 from the red channel, you can write color r minus equals 0.5. Here, minus equals is just an equivalent of writing color r equals color r minus 0.5. And you can do that for any other channel. A cool thing is that you can call the same values of the vector as RGBA or STPQ or XYZW. And that's just because you sometimes use vectors to store pixel colors, sometimes for positions and sometimes for something else. And it's really convenient to be able to call them the way that makes most sense. So what if instead of all four values, you just want three? You can use a VEC3. Uh, let's call it V. Uh, you can assign three values to it. Let's say one, zero, and one. And now you can assign this VEC3 to the RGB values of the color variable. So calling three values of the VEC4 vector will give you a VEC3. With two values, you get a VEC2. And one results in a float. I promise you get used to it once we progress in this course. Unlike with usual programming languages such as, I don't know, Python or C++ or Java, there is no string or character data type. Because GPUs aren't really designed to work with text. And also there is no way to actually print out a message to the console for debugging purposes. Just a little thing to be aware of. Now, let's try to output different values to the buffer. It works the same way that a constant top works. If all your values equals 1, you get white. If you now set everything to 0 except for the alpha channel, you get black. And if the alpha channel is 0, you get a checkerboard, which means your output is transparent. Like I've said, everything is data and here we're just using pixels and color to represent this data. If you want to check out values of individual pixels, you can click on this button, then right click somewhere inside of the operator and enable display pixel values. You can also just hit D on the keyboard. So what happens if you set all values in the color variable to 0.1? you get a 0 0.098. Oh, whoa. That's because right now this GLSL top uses 8-bit fixed pixels and there is just not enough precision to output that 0.1. Also, if you were to put a negative value like a minus 1, you get all zeros because 8-bit fixed pixels aren't capable of negative values. That's why most of the time you're gonna work with the GLSL top, you want your pixels to be 32-bit float RGBA. And that's it for the first part. If you're not familiar with GLSL, please leave a comment if something wasn't clear. If you already know some GLSL, stay tuned, we're gonna get to more advanced topics pretty soon. And also, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon, because without them, I wouldn't be able to spend that much time on making this course. Yeah, thank you for watching. As usual, I'll see you in the next one.